Well, this is the last presentation. Um, it's again me, um, Amilcar Vargas uh, from the University of Barcelona. Well, um, this last presentation is about um, another side in Mexico, but in a, com a very different perspective. I will discuss about the urban development as a high risk factor for conservation of Teotihuacan, uh, the challenges and opportunities we are facing in, in this world heritage site. Um, and this presentation is divided in three. We will discuss about what's the Tehuacan as a war hated site and what's its urban context. And I will talk about something that, it, for me, it was dif a different perspective of heritage approach, the heritage affection and social participation processes. Last, and lastly, I will mention some challenges and opportunities of the current situation in Teotihuacan. Well, uh, Teotihuacan is in the central part of Mexico, very close to Mexico City. It was inscribed in the World Heritage uh, List in 1987 and is the most visited archaeological site in Mexico with over 4 million visitors in 2017. It was inscribed with five out of six criteria of outstanding universal value by the World Heritage Committee in the session in 1987. Well, this is one of the most iconic elements of Teotihuacan, the Pyramid of the Sun. And uh, the Pyramid of the Sun is this point in this huge map. So um, this is the core zone, is the, actually this is the, the World Heritage Site. It's the World Heritage property has 250 hectares, but the buffer zone has 3,000 of the 3,000 thousand over, over, over three thousand hectares um, this is the buffer zone in, in, in this buffer zone there are two municipalities San Martin de las Pirámides and San Juan Teotihuacan, Teotihuacan and they are over 70,000 people living now in a site so if if you consider the, the, the floating uh, population in Teotihuacan in one year they can pass four million and in the villages they only are 70,000, probably the amount of visitors in a, in a week in, in the archaeological site. Well, but if we remember the map you know, of this uh, more than 3,000 hectares, these are the three, the zonification of the urban development in Teotihuacan. These are, this is the central part, the, 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 the orange part, so this is the archaeological site. It's, it's fence. Up, there is a fence of over seven kilometers around the site. But the urban areas, the already urbanized areas, if you compare with the size of the buffer zone, is the red side is huge, and the buildable areas are this part of blue, and the non-buildable areas are most of the sites. So it's not in this in this map. It's not included only the buffer zone but also the extra radio of the buffer zone. So most of the sites are, have, have a high potential of archaeological remains. So what we, uh, what we analyze in, in the project, sorry, some, so this is the, the, the urban problem, is the biggest uh, problem of Teotihuacan nowadays for the conservation of the site. Now moving forward to the heritage affection and social participation processes, I found in an article a very interesting approach of heritage that mentioned that affection, the, about the, our feelings, our affection on like cognition represents subjective mental feelings that can be experienced uh, through emotions and moods. So, and the heritage affection is an effective connection with the heritage, and this uh, heritage affection generates a sense of psychological well-being that influences conservation intentions. So if this is heritage affection, what we will show you now is the opposite phenomenon, the heritage disaffection. So the heritage disaffection effect is the lack of conservation intention because there is not a psychological well-being uh, perceived in the, um, in the con emotional and very, very subjective approach from the people to the side. So if you don't care the side, you will not have the will to protect it. Uh, probably they uh, paid you for doing it, you can say that you will do something. But as I will show in the case of Teotihuacan, this theoretical framework that was published in 2017 but was analyzed by other authors uh, in 2011 and 2012. And so we are facing in, 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 in the case of Teotihuacan, 
the, the lack of her disaffection, so the, what they call the disaffection. And regarding the UNESCO guidance about the social participation, in the UNESCO document, especially the World Heritage Convention, there are a lot of terms and words related to emotion, related to feelings. And uh, as I mentioned in, our, in the presentation, in the Article 5, the state parties have to give the cultural and natural heritage a function in the life of the community. It's incredible to find this in the convention because if the community, they don't have already a cultural uh, a function, if they, if the community, they don't see a, in the heritage uh, a function for their life, how can they be preserved? And in the nomination processes in 1994, uh, it was established that the nomination should be have the, approval, the full approval of local communities in order to share the responsibility of the conservation of the outstanding, outstanding universal value of the site. And even if Teotihuacan was not inscribed, uh, was inscribed before this, um, this policy, it was mandatory to include it as at least in the 5C strategies, which included since 2007 the communities in order to achieve the previous four C's, credibility, conservation, capacity building, and communication. So the examples that, I, that we have found in Tutihuacan about the disaffection are several, but I will show you just a little bit of them. The first, the, and the most recent one was the construction in the buffer zone in the village of San Juan de Tihuacan of the supermarket, uh, Walmart, a uh, huge uh, infrastructure that after the IICAMOS evaluation, because it was a state of conservation report requested by the World Heritage Committee, IICAMOS uh, um, evaluation said that there was no visual or heritage conservation impact on the, the World Heritage site, but it was a negative impact on its symbolic value. So no tangible affection, but in an intangible uh, com um, consequence of the, of the construction of this supermarket. So, uh, in 2009, inside the archaeological site, actually in, uh, in the pyramid of the zone, there was a, a project funded by the government of the state of Mexico, where Teotihuacan is located. Uh, there, there was a huge investment of the light and sound show, show called Teotihuacan Shine. In this si light and sound show, show sorry, it was included the perforation, the, the they were, they were doing, they, they did over 10,000 holes in the stone of the, of the all around the archaeological site. So prote local protesters were against it, and as a consequence, INA canceled the project and several INA authorities resigned. But the, legitim the legitimacy of the INA as an institution that preserved the heritage was completely destroyed. Uh, so, for the local people in Teotihuacan, if the INA itself, the, it can authorize to drill um, more than 10,000 holes in the most iconic pyramid of Teotihuacan, why they were not able to build, to build a, a wall or a house in the non-excavated area? So they consider, if they do that, we can do whatever we want. That's one of the consequences of the, uh, what they call the disaffection. So I, I, in my interviews, I found people that they cry when they remember what happened into the pyramid of the sun because they, they were able to hear the sound of the machines doing all these calls all around the valley. And also another uh, consequence of a policy established by the INA, uh, the restriction for the size, to, to, for the use of the size, is this one. In the old five entrance to the archaeological site, you will, uh, you will find this huge sign that's established among other restrictions that conducting ceremonies inside the archaeological monument zone, as well as bringing in tripods and or a stand for photographic cameras, drones, musical instruments, seashells, guitar, etc., uh, brassiers, sensors, quartz, flowers, herbs, religious images, the stuff used for ceremonies and banners are forbidden. So you can you can go you cannot go to the Wagon with a flower to offering us uh, to, to the temple. So it's forbidden as is forbidden guns and bombs and all the other restrictions that you can see here. <laughs> so how harmful can be a flower? How, how, har how um, harmful can be a guitar played in front of the pyramid of the song because they want to have uh, a, a, a spiritual connection with the side? So these restrictions are also generating uh, local disaffection because local people, before the old fence was built, they were able to pass from one part of the urban area to the other without uh, the need to, to turn around the archaeological site. 
So uh, that's why in 2016, for me, it was not a surprise to find this sticker in a car. So they love to wagon, but they don't like the Ministry of Culture. So they have an emotional appreciation or an affection to the heritage site, but not to the site not manager. So in the, in the social participation project that we were conducting in these four case studies, uh, we found that the local people, they more or less participate just selling souvenirs to the, to the tourists. We not, they're not very expensive, there is no added value. More, more, most of the sellers are local elder people without very good labor conditions. But one day per year, it's allowed to have ceremonies on the spring equinox. And most of the people, there are thousands of them entering the site, is the only day they can authorize under a very extreme uh, surveillance to conduct the ceremonies. The rest of the year, 364 days of the year are forbidden. So what we have found is there is a, that there is a lack of participation of local communities in the decision-making process, including, of course, the risk preparedness. And the relationship between local communities and site managers is, as I shown in the picture, and a lot uh, in several locations, very antagonistic. We conducted a focus group with sites, uh, with local guides of Teotihuacan, and several of their comments were related to how, how disappointed they are with the INAS policies for protection of the sites, and how, have, how they have been suffering the consequences of these policies. So in our, uh, using the letter of participation of Arnstein, we conducted a, a, an analysis of four segments of participation, management, planning, monitoring, and tourism activities. And monitoring is where risk preparedness is. And the site manager, they have complete control of three out of these uh, areas, and, but not in tourism, because the INA, the local the site manager, the managing, managing tourism is not one of their duties. So they are not very well dealing with tourism, even if they have 4,000 or 4 million visitors per year. And the local authorities and communities, they are uh, more or less, ha they have a high participation in tourism because they are the, um, uh, their buses, they, they, they sell what they want, they explain to the visitors what they want, and, uh, but, in, in, yeah, but in the rest of the areas, local authorities, local communities, they have a very low participation level. And, uh, but first steps, uh, had we done towards social participation in heritage and heritage affection. Well, and uh, there are two projects, Archaeologists in a Hurry, which is a um, video um, a YouTube channel where uh, students in, in one school, they develop, um, um, they did a TV news, so they were reporters, they were um, they, they record these this videos and they participate, they, they choose the subjects and the topics. And another project, this, is what, it was, this was conducted by a postdoc a researcher from nearby Teotihuacan. And this other one is uh, conducted by the INA, the site manager, it's Young Gardens of Teotihuacan, which is a summer course uh, talking about conservation of war heritage. So, and this is the last part of my presentation in, yeah. The challenges we're facing in Teotihuacan, well, they were, I, we found four main challenges. The first one is to reverse the disaffection process. The second is to tackle the narrow, tangible, heritage-based conservation. Uh, sorry, tangible-based heritage conservation. So uh, we need to protect not just the materiality, but also the symbolic values of the site. The third challenge is to overpass the mainly nationalistic or massive tourism heritage, use of heritage. So. Mexican government, they have been using uh, the archaeological sites since they was opened in 1910. It was opened by a, pres by a president those years. And also the other use of heritage uh, is for as a massive tourism attraction. And the, la and the fourth challenge uh, which sites is facing is to acknowledge the local intangible heritage and also the local intangible uh, feelings and uh, appreciation of the site. But the opportunities uh, the continue developing the educational programs as a guardian of Totibuacan and archaeologists are uh, currently in a hurry. The second is to implementing a specific heritage 
affection policies, heritage reaffection policies to re-engage with local inhabitants, and the third opportunity is to develop a participatory management model with a broader scope and with a broader scope, not just uh, uh, that includes the local communities. And well, the acknowledgement of the, my supervisors and, and partners in this research. And thank you very much for your patience, for attending the, the, the session, and for your contribution to this session. So, thank you. Very much.